to this new video for my channel, The Mental Traveler. I'm Caro Herrera, and today I'm going to be talking about a story called Tess of the Dervavilles, a pure woman faithfully presented. I shall be reviewing in a spoiler-free way the book and two of its many adaptations. Tess of the Dervavilles is an English classic. It was written by Thomas Hardy and published in 1892. One of the adaptations I'm going to be mentioning is the one from 2008, starring Gemma Ardenton, Eddie Redmayne, and Hans Matheson. The other one is a movie version from 1979, directed by Roman Polanski and starring Natasha Kinski, Lee Lawson and Peter Firth. I discovered Tess of the Dervavilles when I was 17. I've always been a big lover of period dramas with British actors, whether they're from the 30s, the 60s, the 80s, or the current times. And so all of these led me to discover the 60s version of Far From the Madding Crowd, starring Julie Christie, Peter Finch, Sharon Stamp, and Alan Bates. I love that movie, and then I found out it was based on a book by a man called Thomas Hardy. And well, to make a long story short, I ended up researching all of the author's works. My second favorite novel by Thomas Hardy is Tess of the Dorva Veils. Before reading the book though, I saw the 2008 version and I was really fascinated by it. Years later, I also saw the 1979 movie and last week I reread the book for the second time. As you can imagine, this is the story of Tess of the Dervavilles. She's a young woman from rural England of the 19th century, and as with other of Hardy's works, the story is set in his fictional Wessex, an area he invented in the south of England. Tess's story starts when she's around 16, and her family discover that they are descendants of a prestigious family called Dervaville. With the centuries, though, they ended up losing their wealth, and their name changed from Dervaville to Derbafield. Once they learn about their illustrious ancestors, Tess's parents decide to send her to claim kin with a rich mother and son who are called Dervaville as well and don't live that far away. Tess does this, meeting the son first. He is called Alec and he is an arrogant young man who follows for Tess at first sight and longs to seduce her. Along the way though, Tess will also meet a man called Angel Claire and in a way the story is about her relationship with these two men, what they take away from her and what she gives to them. I must admit that I find the relationship between Tess and Alec more interesting than that between Tess and Angel. As a literary creation, I think it's more interesting to analyze. I give the book and its adaptations a 5 out of 5 stars review. I love how in the novel the character developments are so believable and well developed. I also enjoy the setting and the time period. I like how right from the start it gets us into the thinking mood, meaning that For example, even with the title, there are two things to wonder about. Tess of the Dervavilles, a pure woman faithfully presented. The first would be that we know Tess was born as a Dervafield, but as the story progresses, we see her act more and more as a Dervaville, meaning that she becomes a nobler character. And also, despite everything that happens to her, Tess remains a pure woman, spirit and mind, and the other is sort of trying to defy the reader by saying, she's a pure woman after everything that happened. So yeah, this story is pretty complex. It's a good piece of work. It's full of deeper meaning that explore the complexity of humankind. Tess is a fascinating character to study, both as a woman and as a literary creation. Through her, we get a pretty accurate idea of what it was to be a woman in a man's world back in the 19th century. The story follows what it means to be victimized, what it means to be able to forgive, and what it means to be both the predator and the prey of an obsession. This was my introduction to the story, so I really love it. I think the actors did a wonderful job and the costumes are so pretty, as well as the setting, making it all a delight to watch. I also think it's a very faithful adaptation and whenever I'm reading the book, I am picturing actors. And then the 1979 version, despite it being a movie, it manages to be a pretty faithful adaptation. While I thought the actors looked a bit too old to be playing people of 16 and 24, for example, they nonetheless did a wonderful job. And I also really love this adaptation, despite it being directed by Roman Polanski. There are several other adaptations of Tess of the Dervavilles, but the one I want to watch the most is from the 90s, starring Justin Waddle, Jason Fleming, and Jeremy Brett. But yeah, Tess of the Dervavilles is so popular that it even inspired an opera, as well as this movie with Frida Pinto and Riz Amhed. It's called Trishna and it's based in the 21st century in India. Since I would love to talk about Tessa the Dervaville with you, please let me know what are your own thoughts about and whether you like this video or not. In the description box below you can find a link to the Goodreads page for the novel, a link to the 70s adaptation and a link to the most recent adaptation as well. And finally, before I go, I have a Mental Traveler Instagram account, so it would be great if you could follow me, I'd really appreciate it. But yeah, thank you for watching this video, I'm Caro Herrera, The Mental Traveler, and I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. I'll be seeing you soon, goodbye!